We have a new name storm and we have insane heat building in the southwest and southern part of the country. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas. We're going to talk about both of those in this video. First, about the tropics and then about the big time heat in the lower 48. You can scrub along in the chapters if you are looking for the heat, but we're going to start with the tropics. Again, before we get into it, if you want to stay updated on all things weather, especially as we are in hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. Give it a thumbs up if you find this content helpful. All right, 11 o'clock advisory in on subtropical storm, Don. We'll talk about what a subtropical storm is in just a second. But there it is, not impressive. We were talking about this in a previous video that we were likely on the cusp of our next name system of the season. This is not going to impact anybody except the fish and any ships out there. Again, it's just going to meander out in between, the, uh, in between Bermuda, right here, and then the Azores. You might have some increased surf around the Azores, over the next couple of days but again it's nothing to write home about in terms of the track against the a 45 mile per hour subtropical storm as it as of uh, early on july 14th expected to undergo though a transition from subtropical meaning it's a hybrid storm and take on fully tropical characteristics and again i'm going to show you what that means in just one second i'll break down the definition but basically we need to get thunderstorms developing right around the center and then maintaining those thunderstorms when they're distant from the center like we just saw on satellite it is not considered tropical anyway expected to become a 45 or stay a 45 mile per hour tropical storm as we move into the weekend so we'll likely see it lose the sub part of its title and undergo that transition. I'll show you more about that in a second. Spaghetti plots kind of all over the place, but show the general motion here, kind of doing a loop-the-loop -loop out in the middle of the Atlantic. Again, it is not going to hurt anybody elsewhere in the tropics, though we are nice and quiet, so I want you to know that. Sea surface temperatures here, and this is one of the reasons why we're going to see dawn kind of move from subtropical to tropical. It is blazing hot out there. I'll show you the anomalies in a second, but in the vicinity of where dawn is, again, we are way above where we should be for July. Water temperatures pushing 80 degrees. Again, 80 degrees, give or take, is about that threshold needed for a tropical storm to sustain itself and to start to intensify a little bit. So we need heat on the order of the upper 70s and really the lower 80s but i want to show you the anomaly now just to see how crazy it is again here is bermuda we have a few cooler areas in the subtropical atlantic but all that yellow represents where we do have a little bit of warmth above normal the crazy above normal temperatures are in the main development region of the atlantic in between the lesser antilles and then the cabo verde islands you see all that red we're pushing two to almost three degrees celsius above normal again that is really really hot for this time of the year it's gangbusters towards the bahamas and south florida we're pushing four to five degrees above cel uh, uh, celsius above normal in that part so again we do not want any tropical system getting going in the main development region or the caribbean or the gulf of mexico or southwest atlantic right now because it will be able to thrive given the wind shear backing off all right i mentioned this earlier to become a tropical cyclone and again they are tropical cyclones everywhere throughout the world that is its parent title in the atlantic basin we know them as tropical depressions tropical storm and then hurricane based on their wind speed. But again, the umbrella of a tropical cyclone is what they're known as worldwide. So the things that we're looking for to happen for Dawn to lose its sub-definition, we're looking for that closed, well-defined circulation at the surface. That's what it has. So that is what allowed this thing to become a sub-tropical storm. The thing that it is lacking, though, is organized, deep, thunderstorms deep convection as we call it in the weather world right around the center so you've seen the satellites of these tropical storms and hurricanes they have the well-defined center and then they have those big bright red or orange colors right around it that's the cooler cloud tops that is the thunderstorm development right around its center that's what dawn is lacking so we have it kind of gaining some of its strength from differences in temperatures in the atmosphere and then also from the extremely warm ocean temperature beneath it it needs to be getting all of its strength from the ocean temperature to be considered fully tropical. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful, if you want to stay updated on all things weather, again, hit that thumbs up button. We appreciate that. It really does help us out a lot. All right. In terms of the heat, it's going to be blazing hot across parts of the deep south and the southwest getting into the weekend. We have excessive heat warnings through parts of Texas that include San Antonio, southern Oklahoma, right, around, right along the Red River there. And then we're the big time heat. Wait till you see these temperatures. They're going to be insane. 
This is where we would typically see it, though, but still excessive heat warnings for Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, a lot of California, a lot of the desert southwest. That's going to include Phoenix and into Yuma, Arizona as well. Just look at this, though. Look how crazy hot it is. We're going to fast forward into Saturday afternoon. This is 4 o'clock mountain time now. I have the camera kind of over mountain time and Pacific time. So again, regardless of what time it is, it's hot. San Antonio getting a 105. These are actual air temperatures now. This is not the heat index. So this is the actual air temperature. 105 in San Antonio, 103 in Houston, in Dallas. This is Saturday afternoon. Look at out west, though. Needles, California, 120 degrees. Furnace Creek, 126. That's out at the Death Valley National Park Visitor Center. Insane, 126. Again, they're, they have the record for the hottest temperature. That's going to be 134. So we're not going to threaten the record high temperature, but it's going to be hot. Look at what happens on Sunday. We're going to crank up the thermostat even further. Up to 128 degrees in Furnace Creek, 121 in Needles, Phoenix. A little bit cooler, 117. It's still 104 degrees in San Antonio, 96 degrees in Houston, Texas, 94 in Dallas as we get some cooler air trying to spill in from the nation's heartland. But no matter how you slice it, it is going to be blazing hot. This is going to be extended heat wave. We're going to keep the heat, especially in the desert southwest, really getting into the early and middle stages of the upcoming work week. So it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot for a long time. This is no doubt the hottest part of the year. We've not really seen the extreme, crazy kind of calling card heat of the desert southwest yet. That has been mainly building over Texas and further into the southeast so far this summer. We're going to make up for lost time getting into the weekend. Hey, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to stay updated on all things weather through the United States, the Caribbean, especially as we are in hurricane season with our fifth name storm of the season just being named on July 14th, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you hit that little alert bell, you're going to be alerted to any time we post new content. So you can be the first to know what is going on with the weather. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll catch you next time.